man markets have been pretty crazy lately is this going to last or is it time to sell the short answer is i have no idea and i don't believe in telling the future but if you want the long answer stick around and we'll find out What's up, guys, and welcome back to a, another episode. Happy you're back here. Um, this week has been pretty insane. Markets, especially risk assets, crypto, have been going have been going nuts. My God. Uh, so I hope you had a uh, I hope you have you've had a good run so far. Markets have started to slow down a little bit starting uh, yesterday. I don't put too much weight on a weekend price action, even during bull markets. I just don't, especially with the new crypto ETFs and the amount of volume they bring in each day. Um, I really think it is more important what happens during the week, especially with the uh, with the majors, uh, e Ethereum, but especially uh, Bitcoin, of course. However, before we get started, and I will try and, and keep this uh, shorter than last week, which was, I think, like an hour and a half, which is a little too much. I want to cover I want to cover one of the biggest misconceptions I see, and I think it's important to stick around and listen because I know you want to get to the charts, but this I think this will help. This will be beneficial because whether it's in the gym, in, in trading or just life in general, I'm often surprised how often people confuse ability with achievement so let me explain to you uh what i mean this is an easy example you know take the guy uh, in the gym with an incredible physique right that is obviously that is clearly an achievement but does it necessarily reflect his ability well not always uh maybe he's just really genetically gifted maybe he's had years of favorable circumstances that allowed him to focus on training, on working on his physique. And I mean, sure, ability does play a role, but it's not the whole picture. So achievements, achievements are the are the results we see, but ability is the underlying property. Uh, it is a, a a a measurable objective capability, and. Uh, here's the catch. Achievements don't always correlate directly with ability. Achievements can, can, you know, result from luck, from timing, or simply from chance. And this confusion is, is really, really rampant, rampant in, uh, in trading. People see a trader with a massive PNL on Twitter and automatically assume that that trader is highly skilled. Um, so they're equating they're equating the size of the achievement with the level of ability. But trading doesn't work like that. Because in trading, luck and timing just play huge roles. A trader might catch, excuse me, might catch an extraordinary trend at the right time and, and rake in a fortune in a very short amount of time. Um, but that does that mean they have the ability? ability to replicate the results over the long term not necessarily this is also why you see the seasonal traders on twitter traders that 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 pop up online for a month or two every year post get active uh, they wait for extremely favorable circumstances and then a lot of times just go all in and pray for the best uh, i've been on twitter for ages and the amount of people i've seen who come and 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 went um is is pretty shocking anyway on the flip side you know you might have someone with with incredible ability but um you know a a a, a in this context incredible ability is is a deep understanding of markets a strong discipline and a provable profitable system uh but that's someone hasn't hit the right conditions or timing so he or she is not able to showcase that ability in their PL yet the problem is that people tend to judge traders and not just traders also bodybuilders uh, you know personal trainers 
anybody in life purely by their achievements. But again, achievements don't always tell the full story. I mean, of course, somebody with true ability will likely achieve something over time. Um, but the lack of visible achievement doesn't automatically mean they lack ability. And the presence of an achievement doesn't, uh, doesn't automatically mean they have it. So this distinction is, is, is crucial, especially in trading where randomness and luck can mask true ability for years. Uh, so if you're serious about evaluating yourself or others, focus on what can be measured and repeated, and that is ability. Achievements will follow when, when uh, timing aligns, but they're really not the sole indicator of skill. And I think you should really keep that in mind when you're judging others on Twitter and also judge your own ability uh, to do something. With that said, let's dive into the charts. All right, guys, we are at the charts. Um, before we go over last week, before we go over a few relevant charts, I want to dive straight into market mastery because market mastery is going to be in an important lesson today. So let's get right to it. So today I want to talk about how to map your market Mar mapping your market is is extremely important it's, it it may just be one of the most important uh, aspects of um of um sorry of uh, technical analysis jesus christ so let me just scroll through this list and click a uh, a random market right just so i okay so we got ftm <laughs> Uh, let me just remove all these drawings and let me show you how I map a market. What's important to note is if you're new, if you're new to trading, realize that the higher time frame signals, the higher time frame levels, are always the most important ones. Why is that? Markets or price is fractal. What this means is if you have a weekly chart, a weekly chart will look like this, right? Very smooth and not a lot of levels, not a lot of, um, uh, not a lot of key levels. The daily chart of this weekly chart would look something like this, right? So the general direction would be the same as the weekly, uh, but there's just more noise, more levels, more fluctuations that was the word i was looking for christ and if you take this chart and you go on the hour, on the hourly it's gonna look obviously like this right so what this means is the lower the time frame the more signals you get the more noise you get but the key levels stay the same because the daily or the weekly uh, key levels are created by the key daily levels and the key daily levels are created by the weekly by the key hourly levels so looking at the higher time frame levels first is the most important thing to do so whenever i chart a market and it doesn't matter if this is forex or equities or crypto what I do first and foremost is mark the most obvious levels I can see on the weekly chart, giving the most priority to the most recent price action. So for instance, you could say, well, look, this is obviously a key level, right? Key weekly level, but it has no confluence with this level with this low here. So which one do I pick? Do I pick this one or do I pick this one, right? So in general, I go with the most recent level. And do you pick wicks, top of wicks, or do you pick the uh, top of the candles? That is for you to decide in almost all cases, and I do mean in 99% of the cases, I use the wick. The wick simply is part of the candle, uh, so I don't really see why you would ignore this. Of course, cl closes are important, uh, but price did trade at this level. So just ignoring it is not something I do. So in this case, FTM, I would mark this as a uh, 
as an important level. I would obviously mark uh, this level here, this low, uh, comes close to this low here, close to this low here, uh, tags the high, all these highs here. So this is a pretty important uh, support resistance flip. Now you could, of course, oh, you could, of course, mark every single level, right? Uh, but I don't do I don't do that. I didn't it did so in the past, but I just mark what is most relevant to me uh, at this present time. So right now, that is uh, these two levels here. Um, you could also come in and mark uh, this level. Why? Because we have all the highs here. We have the highs here. And this could potentially be the first uh, convincing weekly close through all those highs. So I would also mark that level. And on the uh, weekly, I would keep it at this right here. What I sometimes do is also turn on the 200-day moving average. Um, you could also use the 52-week moving average, uh, whichever one you prefer. Go to the daily. Um, and we get the, the same thing, just exactly the same thing. You could go back all the way, you know, look, look back a year. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. That is, that is not relevant right at this time. Uh, important daily levels are this high here and this high here. Uh, the weekly and the daily level are the same. This is an important level. Uh, I would also mark this last high pre breakout. Uh, this could turn into a potential uh, long level, uh, or buy level, sorry. Uh, so this is what my chart would look like so far. You could come in and mark this low, uh, but that is not relevant to me right now, because if we're assuming, and it is, this is in an uptrend, I don't want to see us move back all the way down here. If we do close down uh, here, for instance, I would start marking daily levels lower down. But for now, I'm assuming this is going to keep trending up. Uh, of course, we'll get, we'll get pullbacks every now and then. But in general, the general direction is up. So I'm looking for relevant levels. Um, I don't use different colors anymore for weekly and daily levels. Uh, I, if, if you've just started trading, I would recommend you do so or you can mark them with uh, daily and, and, and weekly uh, letters like so. That is also really beneficial. Uh, then lastly, I go to the four hour or the one hour, depending on uh, the markets I trade. In crypto, I almost always use the four hour and uh, Forex and equities I use, uh, or indices I use uh, the one hour charts to manage my trades and to, um, to um, What's it called? Pull the trigger. Sorry, to pull the trigger. In this case, we're trading crypto. So I would just go to the four hour and, um, well, it would look, uh, it would look uh, the same. This is the last high pre breakout level on the daily. Uh, so I would probably fine tune it a little more and use this level right here. Um, so if I were too long this market, it would be at this level here. My stop would be below this level here. I mark potential stop as a red ray. Uh, so this is what my trade could potentially look like. I'm not saying I'm taking this trade. I'm just showing you how to map your market. Uh, let's take another, again, random coin. Oh, I don't know what this is. Well, I'm not using this one because this is <laughs> way too uh, new. All right, GMT. Let's see what we have here. Let me remove these levels, remove these drawings. Exactly the same thing, guys. You take the weekly chart, you look at the relevant levels, right? Obviously, this is an important level right here uh, because it's uh, the highest obvious resistance, then it clears the resistance here. Big support here as well. Um, this is important. An important candle it's potentially the first weekly break out of this structure so this level is uh is is, is a key level uh then we got uh this low right here 
really has to flip this uh, previous support into uh, um, into new support. So it has to go through this level and turn it into support again. That would be a really good sign. Uh, but then, you know, you are still running into the high right here. Then we got the naked level as well over here, which could, uh, could potentially uh, offer some resistance. But then afterwards, it's just uh, these highs uh, over here. In a lot of cases, I do use the most extreme high, uh, meaning that if I have these highs here uh, and also these highs over here, I would use the most extreme highs. But in this case, we have a pretty nice double top, uh, so I would I would use uh, I would use these levels in uh, in this particular case. Going to uh, the daily, onto the daily chart. Let me remove these uh, yellow arrows. Um, and again, you'll see that if once you mark the the weekly levels, they pretty much overlap with the uh, with the daily levels, right? Um, this was a weekly naked level, as you can see on the daily, it isn't one. Uh, so you could fine tune it a little bit and use this naked level here. Uh, which will be an important level to watch. But aside from that, I would also use, in this case, the most extreme high, which is here. Uh, if I were to trade this market, I would again look at the last high pre-breakout, which is this one here. Go to the hourly chart, uh, sorry, four-hour chart. And uh, as you'll see, it is still uh, the same level. So if I were to long this market, it would be around here. This would be an important level to watch. Uh, again, not saying I'm taking this trade because I'm not. I'm just showing you once again how to, to map out a market. Always start with the weekly and go down to the daily um, and, and use the four hour or one hour to execute and to uh, manage your trades. But just keep in mind that the weekly and the daily levels are much much more important than the uh, hourly ones. So I'm going to keep it at this for now. We will dive into more details uh, during the weeks ahead, during um, uh, future uh, market mastery lessons. But for now, I think uh, this will do. All right. Before we dive into the charts, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you train on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there, trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dextools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be to just set limit orders for any token so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market? Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% because you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits because you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where Exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots, and let me just tell you, Exception stands out. I wouldn't partner with them if I did not believe they were the best in the game. Plus, they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot. This bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient, which is exactly what you need in fast moving markets like these. Check them out using the link in the description below. All right, guys, let's go over the first trade. That is the Russell 2000 trade. Uh, I think this is a very interesting one because it is it has been a very good trade so far. Uh, and it also show you how I uh, go about managing this uh, this trade and why I pulled the trigger on this. So there's multiple reasons for this, right? Um, these highs are, uh, are important, uh, and these highs over here are important as well. Then we get this big green candle, right? That is a clear weekly thrust through this entire structure. Obviously, it didn't break through this high here, uh, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't always have to close through all levels. It just has to close through uh, multiple key levels or a single, even a single key level. 
Aside from the breakout candle, we also have an ascending triangle forming, right? Again, I've explained this many times. It is an ascending triangle when you have a vertical resistance level and you have a support level that is uh, sloping up on a diagonal trend line, meaning sellers are, ste sellers are stepping in at the same price, but buyers are willing to buy at higher prices. Uh, we get the breakout, then we get this beautiful naked level right here. A naked level is a level that simply has not been retested yet. Uh, so obviously this level here, right? Breakout, and as you can see, price hasn't been retested yet after. Um, as opposed to many, many other levels on any chart, right? There's way more non-naked levels than there are naked levels. Uh, this level here is uh, uh, not naked once, once it's retested here. And even small levels like the, the, the daily hammer over here, right? This one, you get the, uh, fucking Christ. Where the hell is it? Oh, here we go. We get the price here and immediately this is retested. Uh, so it's not a naked level. Compare that to this one here, obviously naked. That is the level I like to buy at. Uh, we get the rounded retest as opposed to an immediate retest. Uh, an immediate retest would be if this candle right here, the one that immediately follows the green one, would have retested this uh, level. That is a, an immediate retest. I don't buy immediate retests. I buy rounded retests. So there has to be at least one candle in between uh, before I step in and buy. Um, so this is this is a, a an obvious signal I have to take. Uh, so I took it. My stop my stop initially is was below the thrust candle here. Uh, so yeah, we get filled right. We get filled on uh, this candle here, the nineteenth of October. We get a, a very good reaction right, which is what you want to see. If you get filled and price just does this for days on end, I usually cut the trade. I don't only want to be right. I want to be right pretty fast. So we get market structure building. Get this, not a lot is happening. This is starting to look good. All these candles are irrelevant. They're very small candles. Uh, they don't show a lot of conviction. Uh, but then we get this one here. This is starting to show a little bit more of aggressive buying uh get this one and then we get this candle here this is uh the most important candle since i get filled this is a candle that isn't only a thrust candle uh, but it also closes through this high over here uh, and it is a uh, uh, previous support over here so this is an important support resistance flip obviously it hasn't flipped previous resistance into potential new support until it's tested as support, uh, but you have to speculate that it will. I do want to buy and add to the trade at the last high pre-breakout, which is here, which is why I marked this level, placed a buy order. Unfortunately, we don't get to add to the trade so far. Uh, I have moved my stop up here, uh, right below the uh, this, this hammer. It's not really a hammer. I wanted to Put it below this candle here but because i want to be a buyer here as well i thought the distance was a little bit too uh, shallow uh, so i went for this candle instead anyway we uh, uh, trend up nothing happens and then we get this candle right here which is another beautiful candle that closes through this consolidation structure uh, again i want to add to the trade at this last high pre-break which is also a naked level which is not retested immediately but unfortunately price escapes from us once again uh this is on a friday so the market closes not much we can do but wait my stop is now below this last uh, small hammer over here i generally just don't want to see price trade back all the way down here um on the monday open or well, sunday evening open uh, atr is also going to be uh, moved up uh, probably around here somewhere 
um so i don't want it to go below daily adr and atr and start closing them down here that wouldn't be a good sign my uh first uh, target is the equal high over here at 2447 and the second target i have is the uh, 2600 level which is the target of the ascending triangle which you determine like so you take the bottom of the triangle and you take the top of the triangle and you overlap it with the uh, breakout point uh, which is here so that makes the, uh, the 2600 level uh, we'll see what we get we'll see what we get so far it's a it's a good trade i do hope i'll get to add to it um, and at least hit the first target but we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see but i think this this really shows you how i trade markets and uh, that once you get a winner, you try to add to it as many times as you can at levels that actually make sense according to your plan. What I also do is the initial risk I put on, right, uh, entry and uh, initial stop um, is only half a percent of my trading portfolio. Uh, so once I move my stop up for the first time, right, um, uh, up to here, I now have no risk on anymore because if I'm stopped out over here, I have a profit. So when I put on a new position uh, to add to the trade, this trade will still only risk 0.5% uh, 0, 0 of my trading portfolio. I don't just keep adding risk and risk and risk and risk to a trade. The total amount of risk will always remain half a percent of my, uh, of my portfolio. All right, let's move on to Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. Uh, as you can see, it is starting to show some weakness, which isn't uh, weird, right? I mean, this run has been absolutely fucking insane. Look at these, look at these candles, man. They're pretty, pretty crazy. Um, there's no structure building. There's no real obvious level to go long at. I do have some orders in this market. Christ almighty, there's so many levels drawn. I apologize for this. Let me just remove a couple of them because um, we don't need a lot of them anymore. This is also what you should do, right? When levels become irrelevant, just remove them so you don't uh, mess up your charts. Uh, I do want to buy this naked high right here, which is where my uh, buy order is at. Uh, what I don't like about this right now is that this structure has been building, meaning that this could turn into potential resistance once you are filled on the trade here. Could trade up and run straight into resistance. Um, I've explained this a lot of times already. Potential support breaks, turns into potential resistance. That is just something you have to keep in mind. Um, other than that, I'm not really watching uh, Bitcoin much right now. I am also still long this market. Uh, once we start breaking down below this area here, I will probably start closing. Uh, probably start closing some uh, some long positions, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we get. This is also still the uh, the uh, ascending triangle level. Which is, uh, which is still important. If we retest this, that is okay. Break down below, I'm not liking it. I would not like that. Uh, I am long cat, Simon's cat, um, because it's a very obvious play to me. You have this candle here, fucking beautiful thrust right through all these highs. Uh, that is just a trade I have to take. I don't care which market it is, guys. I really do not care which market it is. Once it's liquid, once it isn't extremely volatile like most meme coins are, I'll just take the trade. I like this level because it is both a naked level, it is the last high pre-break, and it is also the top of a hammer. Uh, longing the top of a hammer is, uh, uh, is, is usually... Uh, or uh, sometimes a, a good idea depending on the uh, on the position of the of the hammer. In this case, I really like the fact that this is a hammer. So I bought this uh, this level uh, was filled here. We are starting to uh, reverse 
uh, even though the uh, initial response was really good. My target is uh, equal highs. Let's see what we, so let's see what we get. I'm not too worried uh, about this right now. I have a very wide stop. My stop is the bottom of the of the hammer. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see what we get. We could see a three drives to a low pattern. Uh, three drives to a low pattern is exactly what the name says. You have a low, right? Then you get a first hit into the low. Then you get a second hit into the low. And then you get a third hit into the low. Usually, the uh, um, uh, each low is a slightly lower than the low before that. Uh, if the if the uh, if the 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 difference between the lows is too much, I don't consider it a three drives to a low. But in this case, we could be uh, seeing something like that happen. So if we get back to my um, my entry, I'm really not too worried about it much. Um, so yeah, let's see, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, ETH, Ethereum, my God. Um, again, I, uh, I have some orders in this market. Um, they are at these highs. Uh, am I convinced of this market right now? Not as much, not as much. Um, we have this significant high right here, which hasn't been broken anywhere yet. Uh, then even if we break out of this high, you know, we still have a lot of highs to cover. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I do like the way this candle shaped up and closed through uh, this high and these highs here. So I do think long in it makes uh, sense. But we'll see. <laughs> We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. I am watching uh, markets pretty closely lately, so uh, I won't be caught in any uh, in any surprises. Uh, my stop is also not at this level here; it's uh, below the uh, the daily trust. So yeah, let's see what we uh, let's see what we get on this. Mm, Solana, Solana, Solana. Uh, I was uh, long Solana, but I was uh, stopped out today uh, i had a, a manual stop let me check i had my stop oh yeah i had it right over here right over here uh below this thrust candle here uh, so i was stopped out which is uh which is too bad um we could be seeing some sort of distribution here but I don't think we are. This is um, this isn't a distribution top. What we could potentially see forming is a head and shoulder top. We got the the left shoulder forming already. Uh, if we get to the neckline again and bounce, uh, see a right shoulder forming, I would be uh, I would be starting to uh, well not concerned, but I would be looking for a short, uh, which would look like uh, this which would mean we could potentially target uh, 194, in which case I would probably target this level here. Um, yeah, this, this really looks like a level that we could retest because it's a significant level, right? We have these highs, uh, then we get the break, and we have absolutely no pullback and no retest of this level. So if we do get a head and shoulder top forming when i say head and shoulder top it could mean a a local top a temporary top uh, i will be looking to short this market the only reason why i don't like this short is because we have this level here uh, this is an obvious thrust candle this is still a naked level uh going short and then immediately running into this naked high naked level that is not a trade i usually take uh but if the if the head and shoulder uh, formation uh, pattern does end up forming and we get a, a convincing four hour close through this level i will definitely go with the trade and short this market i am currently short a uh, bunk uh for the same reason uh, we get the uh head and shoulder top forming we get the close uh so i am short this market 
uh, short until here, stop above this high here. Uh, so let's see if that works out. I think I short somewhere around here. Uh, so that is a uh, that is a potential 3.6 R trade, which would be uh, a nice, and it is a small hedge against the multiple long positions I have on. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, that is uh, bunk ICP. I'm not in this trade, but I'm looking to uh, be a buyer uh, because I very much like this uh, these multiple highs. Uh, I like this thrust candle a lot. I like the fact that this middle candle isn't a uh, shooting star. It is just an indecision candle. And then we get this last candle here. It's also not a shooting star. So we could see some pretty natural uh, retracement into these highs here. Uh, naked highs, uh, last high pre-breakouts. This candle obviously breaks through all these highs. This high and even this high, and even this high. Uh, so this, this is a very important candle, and these are very important levels to uh, take a trade at for me. So that is what I'm looking at at ICP for at ICP. Mm, Evo uh, posted this on Twitter. I don't know what this market is, uh, but this could be a potential double, you know. This could be a potential double bottom. It does look like it has formed a double bottom. Uh, we get the confirmation by looking at volume. As you can see, the volume at this candle here, the first low is significantly low, uh, higher sorry, than the selling volume at the second time back at the same low. Uh, that is a very important confirmation of a potential uh, double bottom. Uh, what you do want to see is if you take a double bottom, right? And you take the highest point in between those, uh, those lows. Uh, we call that the uh, double bottom neckline. Uh, you get the absolute confirmation of it being a double bottom once we break through the double bottom neckline. So if you want to be uh, sure, if you want to wait for confirmation, wait for this market to break out of this level here and then long this market to uh, 60, 65. Uh, you could, of course, take on more risk and say, well, this candle, a thrust candle, through these highs, through this high, um, we have a uh, diagonal resistance level as well. It closed through it, right? Now we get a retest and turning this into potential support. As you can see, it has successfully done so thus far. Uh, so you could have bid this level here and this level here. Uh, you would have been filled for this trade right now. Uh, I am not in this trade yet, uh, but I could see why people uh, uh, would take it the way I just explained it to you. Uh, I'm personally, wa personally waiting for it to break the, the neckline. Uh, and once it does, uh, I'll go 50% uh, uh, at, the, at the confirmed breakout on the daily close. Uh, and add to the trade if we get a uh, a retest of the neckline and then uh, be a buyer up until 60 65 um yeah you know there are so many good setups right now uh, and i just want to uh, be careful and not go over too many of them again uh, but there's there just go over these markets guys there are so many obvious nice thrust candles that offer you naked uh, levels to potentially be a buyer at don't go around and just offer every single uh, every single naked level before every single thrust candle it doesn't work like that uh, if i was an atom um I, I i was last week but i cut this too uh, quickly because i had too many positions on I would be a little wary of this candle here because we have this high, right? Um, it goes into the high and it is now forming a, uh, a really big rejection candle, really big shooting star. So we could see uh, some uh, selling pressure come in on, on Adam. Um, again, pretty good, pretty good naked level you could come in at. Uh, I'm not going to personally because there are other options jesus christ uh, this is one of the uh this is one of the trades i um i posted on twitter as well get the rectangle get the 
it's a breakout, confirmed breakout, breaks out over 3% uh, out of the rectangle. You, be, you are a buyer. You could add at the retest or just go in all in uh, uh, at the confirmation of the breakout and you sell the um, rectangle target. This would have been a, a good trade to take. This rejection candle is pretty big. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to keep it at this right now. Uh, I am currently in this trade. ETH5, exactly the same thing. Rectangle forming. 3% breakout. I bought the breakout candle and I bought the retest here. So I am now currently 100% uh, long ETH5. And my target is this uh, support resistance level here. Uh, it isn't exactly the rectangle target, I believe, or is it? Is it? No, the rectangle target is slightly lower. Uh, so I will mark that level as well, uh, just in case I want to sell part of the position. But I do think it'll run to this level as it is a much more important level than this random level uh, over here. But if again, if you're trading a pattern, uh, you're not trading just the way the pattern looks. You're also trading the a profit level that comes with the pattern and you're trading the uh, stop loss that goes with the pattern. Uh, so my stop for this trade is currently below the low over here. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what we get on this one. Um, ICP covered it, covered it already. Litecoin. A lot of markets are looking um, not too weak. Sushi. Uh, saw this yesterday as well because I had a uh, I had an alert on, <laughs> but look at this freaking candle, man! This is just in this is fucking insane. Um, will I buy a retest? Yes, I will. I have an offer for this high here because I still think this candle is uh, is uh, significant. I also think the rejection is significant, but um. Yeah, I still think it makes sense to uh, to be a buyer and look for uh, upward continuation. We got Theta, Theta. Um, yeah, same story. Tia. I will be a buyer of Tia uh, because I do think this is a very important range. And I think we have now broken out of this range. I also think it is an important uh, support resistance level which is now potentially turning into new support. Um, so I'm waiting for price action to develop a little further um, and, and, and see when I'll be a buyer. It's a little messy, this price action over here for me. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I am interested in this market. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got uh, maybe Wu. No. Wu was, was looking pretty good. Uh, I still think this is a very important level. Uh, I got the alert last night. Uh, got me out of my sleep, for Christ's sake. Um, but yeah, I uh, I closed this trade pretty quickly. This this daily candle is looking like a, a shooting star rejection candle. Um, it, it's got it's really got to close the daily above this level over here for me to be interested in buying this market. And then all you got to do is pray to God, you know, the, the daily breakout doesn't look like this, which happens a lot in crypto, which is really annoying. But um, yeah, you know, that's just uh, that's just the reality of the game. So I'm going to turn this into the uh, daily close instead of the four hour oh, crossing up. There we go. All right, guys, that's it for now. Um... We are going to cover a, a trader talk. All right, guys, trader talk. What are the 10 most important insights you've gained over the last years as a trader? Uh, I have written these down uh, again because it's just too much material to remember and go over just out of uh, from the top of my head. Uh, I risk of, of missing out on stuff. I do want to tell you. So excuse me for reading from the from my screen again. Um, you know, I just I just want to make sure I get across as much information as I can. Uh, so let me uh, let me um, uh, read out to you what I wrote down. 
the most important thing is that trading is glamorized, right? By movies, by social media. But the reality is it's it's a grind, man. It's a it's a brutal, humbling, <laughs> and often even shocking grind. This is probably a probably most likely, I cannot think of another example where I mean, if you work, if you work for it, for a, a company, if you just have a, a regular nine to five job, you know, you can go in, you can do, you know, just, just slack a bit. Uh, you have, you have off days, days where you just care less, where you just don't feel like it, but your salary is going to remain the same, right? I mean, especially if you live in, in, in Europe and you're really protected as an employee, I mean, you can do some pretty crazy shit to your employer and still get a salary every single month. Trading is probably the only, the only job there is where you can work, I mean, 10, 15 hours a day for months, even years, and not just make less money, but lose money. You can actually lose money. The more you can do so much, you can do as much as you possibly could and still lose money. That is, that is a psychological burden to carry, man. Trust me. Again, it's not, it's not like you, you make a certain amount every month. And if you do poorly, if you're, if you're trading poorly, you just make a little less. You lose. You lose money. So yeah, that's why today we're diving into, the, into 10 cold hard truths about trading that no one uh, really ever talks about. And these are inspired by uh, my own experience uh, over the last uh, seven years, but also uh, other top traders, you know, books like Market Wizards. Um, so these aren't just personal opinions. These are, these are things uh, professional traders actually uh, run into. Uh, but, but don't worry, these are not meant to discourage you, even though it might sound like it. Um, they're actually to motivate you, especially during those tough, drawdown periods so uh, all right let's let's get into it number one win rates do not equal success even the best traders in the world are wrong 50 to 70 percent of the time you heard that right people like paul tudor jones jason shapiro and richard dennis made their fortunes with win weight win rates that would make most people quit why? Because they know how to manage their risk and capitalize on the wins when they come. The idea that you need a very high win rate to make it isn't only not true, it is also pretty much impossible. There are no traders, not that I know of, with win rates that are like, that are like 80 or 90%. They do exist, but their, their, their potential return compared to their uh, potential uh, drawdown is uh is is lower um so it's 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 very it's very difficult you're going to be wrong most of the time and of course there are traders that don't experience much drawdown because they just leave their positions running and you could you could of course argue that you don't actually take a loss uh, as long as you don't close a position but this doesn't happen in professional trading because in professional trading you, especially if you're if you're uh, employed by a hedge fund, for instance, you have to show them what your maximal drawdown is, how much risk you're taking on, and if you're if you're making 20k a month or 30k a month, but your yearly potential drawdown is like four, five, six times higher than your uh, uh, than the profit you're making, uh, no one's gonna hire you. Absolutely, no one is gonna hire you. You have to be able to show them your profit ratio, which does consider your maximum drawdown and the mask risk you're taking. Uh, number two, most of your career, career. Number two, most of your career is in drawdown. And this is, this is meant 70 to 80% of a trader's career is spent either in drawdown or trying to recover from a drawdown. I mean, just really just just let that sink in and, and, and think about it for a second if you feel like you're always trying to claw your way back up that doesn't mean you're failing you're living the actual trader's reality welcome to the club welcome to the club number three your year comes down to maybe two, two or three months 
this is a this is a brutal stat for many traders the bulk of their annual profits come from just two or three months out of the year the rest of the time is just waiting uh breaking even grinding through small losses small winners here and there and this is why patience isn't just a virtue it is a survival skill in trading number four the biggest wins but also the biggest losses follow emotional extremes and this is pretty fascinating some of the most profitable trades in history happened after traders endured brutal drawdowns but the opposite is often true as well many traders experience their biggest losses right after a streak of wins why euphoria and overconfidence when emotions run high it's easy to take on too much risk or deviate from your strategy it is a harsh reminder that controlling your mindset is just as important as controlling your trades number five losing streaks are inevitable and this is a, a reality check even if you're a profitable trader you will have streaks of 10 to 15 losing trades in a row if your win rate even if your win rate is 50 uh, percent if you take 500 trades the odds of running into a 10 or 15 losing streak is almost guaranteed and not just once it'll happen more than once um so it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and your ability to stick to your plan during these streaks will determine if you survive or quit number six survivorship bias is a real thing for every market wizard or trading legend you read about, there are hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of traders who failed and slowly disappeared. The ones you hear about are the exceptions and not the rule. Keep that in mind when comparing yourself to others and especially to the greats. Number seven, trading is mostly boring, man, and that is, that is true. Despite what you see in movies, most trading isn't high octane action. It's waiting, 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 waiting for setups, waiting for confirmations, waiting for the markets to make sense again. I mean, if you find this boring, that is a good sign. It means you're doing it right. It means you're waiting. It, mean, it means you're bringing up the patience you need uh, in between the trades you should take. If you're always doing something, if you're always trading, always having trades on, you're doing something wrong man there's no there's no market there never is a a there are no conditions unless you are a, a scalper uh, where you can take multiple trades every single day every single day of the year that just that that's not the way to do it number eight uh a few traders only a few traders outperform the market and that is a tough pill to swallow but only about five percent of traders outperform over the long term i mean that means outperforming the index uh, most people either match it or underperform or blow up their accounts if you're in this for the long haul you're already ahead of the majority of people number nine systemic traders still struggle even if you're using a systemic data-driven approach you're not immune to drawdowns multi-year underperformance isn't uncommon the difference is that systemic traders know how to stick to their edge even when it's not paying off immediately and number 10 the last one is volatility is a double-edged sword i mean we all chase volatility right we, we love it uh, and it can be both your greatest ally and your worst enemy the most volatile trading days generate the most profits but of course they also carry the highest risks miss a few and your edge could disappear entirely all right guys so there you have it i mean these are these are unvarnished truths about trading um if any of this makes you uncomfortable i mean i think that is a good thing it means you're taking this seriously um trading isn't about being right all the time or making money every day not even every month it's about surviving long enough in between trades to uh potentially and hopefully uh, let your edge play out so stay disciplined stay focused keep grinding please subscribe to this video if you like it uh, leave a comment if you can i would appreciate if you would do so and i hope to see you back here next week have a great 
end of your weekend and have a good trading week ahead. See you next time.